Factsverse presents 15 Facts About Quantum Leap. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Quantum Leap. For five seasons, from 1989 to 1993, physicist Dr. Sam Beckett graced our televisions while he leaped from person to person to right epic wrongs that have changed the course of world history. Scott Bakula played Dr. Beckett, and during each episode, he ended up in a different person. On one episode, he was a pregnant woman, and on another, he was Lee Harvey Oswald. To help Dr. Beckett navigate the historical sequences, Beckett had his sidekick, Al. If you were a fan of this show, keep watching. Here are 15 facts about Quantum Leap that might shock you. Five nights a week. Quantum Leap wasn't bringing in the ratings that the network hoped, so they did something very unprecedented. NBC aired the show five nights a week for two summers in a row, hoping to get more people watching. The daily shows brought in more fans and created a cult status. The people who watched the show called themselves Leapers, and they held conventions over the years. The Leapers even funded Dean Stockwell's, a.k.a. Al's, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. NBC canceled the show abruptly in 1993. The title of the show came from a physics book. Donald P. Belisario is the man who created the show. He got the idea while reading a book called Coming of Age in the Milky Way. The book took man from looking at the stars to quantum physics and gave the history of everything. Donald says that the quantum leap is a physical thing that happens but can't be explained. Donald admits he never explained who was leaping Sam. Was it God? Was it fate? Donald believed that revealing whatever or whoever allowed Sam to leap would ruin the mystery of the show. I was reading uh, a book called, uh, I think it was called Coming of Age in the Milky Way, and it took man from the first time he looked up at the stars and all the way through to quantum physics. Dean Stockwell's film career helped him get his role on Quantum Leap. Before Quantum Leap, Dean Stockwell worked in movies and television for years. It was during the 80s that Dean's star shined its brightest. In 1986, he starred in Blue Velvet, which put him on the map. In 1988, he received an Oscar nomination for his role in Married to the Mob. Dean says that he was doing television for years, but people weren't interested in him. It was film that helped to change his career for the better. When Dean read the script for Quantum Leap, he knew right away he wanted a part. He says he knew immediately that the show was going to be a success. When Dean was cast, he says he hoped that the show would last a while. He hoped that the show would be on the air for five or six years. He says he had done around 60 films before landing the role of Al and had nothing left to prove in film. The show ended up on the air for four years, and Dean says he was satisfied with that. Scott Bakula nailed his audition. The show's casting director called Scott Bakula to ask him to come audition for the role of Dr. Sam Beckett. The show's creator, Donald Belisario, sat in on the audition. After Scott read for the part, he could barely contain his excitement. He thanked Scott for reading, and when Scott left, Donald closed the door. Immediately, he told the casting director that Scott was the guy for the part. He just didn't want to say it in front of Scott. During the same conversation, the casting director suggested that they hire Dean Stockwell to play Al. The director reminded Donald that Dean had just done Married to the Mob, and the film rejuvenated his career. Donald immediately agreed, and his two lead characters were set. Donald says he couldn't imagine any two people better to play the two roles. Animal rights activists love the chimp deck. In the January 24, 1961 episode, The Wrong Stuff, Sam jumps into the body of a chimp that's trapped in a research lab and headed into space. Paul Brown was the writer of that particular episode, and he met with Jane Goodall, who was a primate expert. Jane was so moved by the idea for the show that she started sending him articles about the inhumane treatment of lab animals to help him write the script. Deborah Pratt was the show's co-executive producer, and also the voice of the hybrid computer, Ziggy. She was also an animal rights activist, and she asked Paul to show the inhumane treatment of animals on the show. In the end, they decided to lay out both sides and allow the audience to decide for themselves what is right or wrong. Quantum teleportation may be a real thing. The phrase quantum leap was listed in the dictionary in 1956. It's defined as an abrupt transition of a system described by quantum mechanics from one of its discrete states to another, as the fall of an electron in an atom to an orbit of lower energy, or an abrupt change, sudden increase, or dramatic advance. In 2014, the University of Geneva teleported a photon to a crystal encased over five and a half miles away. They're hoping that one day they can transport more than just particles through optical fibers. One episode featured a young Donald Trump. In a play on It's a Wonderful Life, Quantum Leap had an episode titled It's a Wonderful Leap. 
The show was set on May 10th, 1958, and Sam was a New York City cab driver. While driving, a father and a son were in the cab. The father was telling his young son the importance of real estate. He also makes a mention of the glass tower being built near Tiffany's. The boy was supposed to be young Donald Trump, and it was then that he got his idea for the Trump Tower. Jennifer Aniston guest starred. After she became a household name, Jennifer Aniston starred in an episode in season five titled Nowhere to Run. She played a volunteer at a hospital for Vietnam vets. Sam leaped into the body of a soldier who lost his legs. Jennifer was in most of the episode. Neil Patrick Harris and Joseph Gordon-Levitt also guest starred. The show received a pushback for an episode featuring a gay character. In the 1992 episode titled Running for Honor, Sam visits a naval college to prevent a cadet from killing one of his gay classmates. NBC lost $500,000 on the episode because advertisers pulled out when they found out the basis of the episode. The network didn't want to make a fuss over the episode. They marketed the episode as Sam's life hangs in the balance when he's accused of betraying his country. The Los Angeles chapter of GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, was upset by the script and the marketing. They believe that the script slurred gays. Robert Harris Duncan, the writer of the episode, was gay, and he was upset that his own people were bashing him. Robert believed it was a story that needed to be told on primetime TV. For the first time, a story on gay bashing and outing was on TV, but GLAAD didn't understand that. The series finale polarized fans. NBC never told the producers that the show wasn't being renewed for another season. Because of this, Donald Belisario had to wrap the last episode of season 5 as if they weren't coming back. In the episode, Sam decided to keep leaping instead of returning home. Unfortunately, some fans didn't like the ending. They felt that there were loose ends. Scott Bakula liked the ending. He says that it left the door open, and it was a metaphor for the show that continues to live on today. He says he likes the idea that Sam and Al are still out there. Donald Belisario recreated his father's bar for the final episode. Al's bar in the series finale was actually a recreation of his father's bar. Donald used his memories of the bar and photographs to recreate every single detail right down to the taps on the bar. Donald says he did it as a tribute to his father and wanted to have a chance to sit down in his father's bar again. Fans turned Sam Beckett's name into an acronym. People often say WWJD, or What Would Jesus Do? Fans of the show would say WWSBD, or What Would Sam Beckett Do? Scott says he heard someone say it to him and he thought it was very sweet. Scott says the moment really stands out to him. Quantum Leap was novelized. From 1992 to 2000, Berkeley published the show in a book form. There were 18 novels in total. Universal asked Berkeley to hire writers like Ashley McConnell to write whatever they wanted. Ashley says the only feedback she got from Universal was to make sure that Sam and Al interact. Ashley's novel was the first one entitled The Novel. Hers had historical stories like the falling of the Berlin Wall and Sam leaping into the body of a priest. The show was turned into a comic book series. Innovation Publishing obtained the rights from Universal to write a graphic novel, and they used different writers. The first comic was published in 1991, and it continued to be published until August 1993. The graphic novels tackled many of the most popular episodes and the ones with the most scandal. A reboot? Over the years, there have been rumblings about reboots. In 2002, Sci-Fi announced plans to develop a two-hour quantum leap made for TV movie, but it never happened. Eight years later, Scott announced at Comic-Con they were working on a Quantum Leap movie script, and it was almost completed. Whether or not this will ever happen remains to be seen. Which of these facts was most surprising to you? Let us know in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to Factsverse for more great videos.